Hey guys, now you can follow me on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash ultramaximusreviews. Um, Misa thought Loki was a man. I am a man, sweetheart. Eh, no, help me, help me, help me. So, uh, you'd be cool if I didn't tell anybody about this, right? Yeah, I'd be down with that. <laughs> so hot. It's raining, man! Hello YouTube, Ultra Maximus back with another toy review, and today we're taking a look at another Marvel Legends figure, and it's from the Toys R Us exclusive A-Force set. And today we're going to take a look at Lady Loki, and uh, this is a weird character. I'm just not a fan of the gender bending just to gender bend. Um, this is an alternate version of Loki. Is it? I want to say it's the Marvel Now universe. Um, I, I can't remember. If you know, um, leave a comment down below. I can't just remember off the top of my head because I just don't care for that kind of stuff. And I can see Loki being a female. Um, honestly, out of all the weird, dumb gender bending just to do it to be politically correct and yay, look what we're doing now. Aren't we progressive? kind of mindset. This character I can see becoming a female because Loki's a trickster. I can see him bouncing back and forth and I really can see Loki just kind of not keeping one conformed shape or gender um, and just kind of being all over the place. So I'm okay with that and that works for me. Um, the character itself though, or as far as the action figure, they did a good job with it. Uh, it's painted very very, very well. I adore the face sculpt and the makeup that they've done. I mean, spot on. How can you do something this good and then have figures with the dumbest, derpiest eyes like Misty Knight? I just, I don't get it. Um, but thank goodness they did put the effort in this because this was a pretty expensive set. Um, but this is another figure I didn't think I was going to like uh, much at all until I got it in hand and it just really impressed the hell out of me. Now, as far as articulation goes on the figure, she uh, really can't move her head hardly at all up or down because of the way that her hair sits. And then she's got this cloak with the fuzz around it. She can wiggle the head back and forth just a little bit. Um, the horns are on there really, really well. I thought those were going to be really rubbery and just terrible, but they are not. Um, her arms go out about that far. They go in a little bit. Again, it's because of all this cloak that's going on around there. She has a twist at the upper arm. She does have a single jointed elbow, which is very, very tight. Um, and then there is that twist at the elbow uh, that the other characters have as well. She's got um, hinges. Oh, I thought I broke it for a second. She's got hinges at her um, wrists. That one does not like to hinge very much. This one does a little bit more um, like that. Um, so they do move up and down and then they do twist, uh, which is nice. Uh, she has a diaphragm joint that kind of moves back and forth. It goes down a little bit, doesn't go back hardly at all. This piece is a rubber piece that hangs around the waist, which is nice. There is no movement at the waist, which again, unfortunate. I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, she can kick that far up. She cannot kick back at all because of the uh, cloak. She can kick her legs out that far. And then she has a twist up here at the upper thigh, which is very, very stiff. There it goes, it cracks. And then uh, she has a double jointed knee uh, right here. And then the top of the boot, the cuff is hanging uh, loose so that it can move around with the joint, uh, which is a very, very nice. There is no cut at the upper boot. She has a hinge, if I can get this back into focus. So she's got a hinge at her foot itself at the ankle, and she's got that uh, crazy ankle rocker pivot we love! With this being her widest possible stance with both feet still flat on the floor, and that is mainly because of the cape because if you put her legs out any further than the cape, then she's basically just going to fall down because, well, she'll be standing on the cape. But this is actually a pretty cool looking pose. She's like, come on, get some. I'm a goddess. What are you going to do, huh? 
So taking a closer look at the figure itself, I love the sculpt on this figure. This is one of the better uh, figures. It's probably in the top three of the sculpts in the set and paint job. The makeup looks amazing. And I think the green and the gold uh, decos look really nice. I like all the gold that's in her hair. Um, the uh, cape itself looks good with the fur. It kind of hampers the articulation, but that's okay. I'm not going to pose this around a lot, and she's supposed to be kind of majestic anyway, so she's just going to stand there and look all magic-y. But I love the gold bits in her hair. I wish there was some black washing in the, uh, the, the fur on the cape itself, though. That's kind of plain a little bit, but everything else looks really decent. I like the metallic green on her suit, and they've got the painted on scales which kind of remind me of the Submariner, but overall definitely very, very cool. And uh, the, the horns on the head, um, they feel pretty solid, like they're not going to fall off. So that's kind of nice. I was worried about that. They were going to be too rubbery and weird and just, uh, you know, not formed right. But they, they did a good job with them. I will give them that. Now taking a look at the midsection of the figure, again, the metallic green paint is amazing looking. I like uh, how they do have the scales on there. They're painted on there. Again, it reminds me of uh, the Submariner uh, from the Walgreens exclusive. The belt looks good. The gold uh, bits on it, how it drapes down around her front and her crotchal area looks nice. And the cape itself looks good. I like all the wrinkles in it. Again, I wish there was some more black washing in that uh, just to kind of give it a little more definition, but eh, it is what it is. Um, the actual cape itself has enough detail that the shadows do pick up, but that fur around the uh, shoulders could have used some black wash. But I do like how she has the painted fingernails, much like the Hella figure, which uh, this is going to be up there on the shelf next to. And finally, taking a look at the legs of the figure, again, the cape has a lot of nice detail as it comes down to the uh, bottom of her boots there. Um, the boots done well, they're kind of gold. I like how there's the uh, wrapping around the knee. I think that looks pretty good. Um, the you know wrinkles and details in her boots are pretty nice. She's a pretty stable figure, which I do appreciate. Uh, she's not one I'm gonna put in a lot of dynamic poses. The more or less, look at me, I'm a goddess. And uh, yeah, that's how she's gonna stand on the shelf. For comparison, here we have Lady Loki with her wave mates in this set. We've got, the, of course, the She-Hulk, uh, Lady Bloodstone, and Singularity. And to be honest, I think these three right here are probably the best looking of figures of the bunch. Actually, these four, because I do like the She-Hulk, but uh, she's kind of plain in comparison to these ladies right here. Uh, they're all four, sculpted really, really well, painted well. I think these three, though, are more dynamic than the She-Hulk, and that's just by design of the costumes. Um, and I, I, I think I'd give She-Hulk a higher mark if she had an alternate smiling face rather than her just kind of er face. But definitely a set that uh, turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, definitely liking the characters more than I thought I would. And the only reason I even got the set was for the She-Hulk and uh, was happy with the outcome of the other figures. So is Lady Loki a figure that you want in your Marvel Legends collection? Well, if you are a Thor completist, you may want this figure. If you like the alternate uh, characters or the gender-bending versions of characters, this may be something that you want. I will be keeping this figure up on my Thor shelf and putting it next to the female Thor, I think. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it was an interesting idea, I guess, in the comics. I personally hate the gender bending that they're doing. They're just trying to make it uh, really, you know, SJW and look how advanced and progressive we are. And I think it's a bunch of crap. But uh, the figure itself looks really, really nice. I love the sculpt, the paintwork, the makeup detail on the figure. It all looks really good. It's a nice figure. I just don't really care about the character. Um, <laughs> that being said, it's definitely very cool looking. Um, I will give it to that. They put a lot of uh, work into it. And it does look like the comic book rendition of the character. So if that's what you're after, you're definitely going to get a good pick out of this one. So there she is, Lady Loki from the Toys R Us exclusive Marvel Legends A-Force set. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs it up. If you hate this video, thumbs it down. To watch more Ultra Maximus, 
click on the links to the right. Don't forget to subscribe and share, like us on Facebook, and look for more videos in the future.